Okay, so what's going on? What I can tell you for sure is that I'm working on uh, getting some ticket concrete load. Call these concrete load tickets. And this is for the joint reinforced paving so the report is done and turned in that was done two days ago but I had these low tickets I also had a one where we did split testing notice how those numbers are like way different paved tech slump JRB slump paved tech temp JRB temp Air, air is close, but with it, air pressure meters, I would think they'd be even closer. But um, yeah, so I'm turning this in. This is the location right here, eight inch paving. This is on southbound Elysian, Lion, Stop Lucis, stationing. Of course, they use 110 cubic yards. I think they should have. The theoretical volume was for about one, 101. I think 100, actually. It was uh, 8 inches. Um, so what you do... When you, every time a load comes in, you have to check it. Yeah, uh, you might have someone checking loads at the batch plant, but if the if the supplier is loading up more than your job, let's say he's loading two or three different jobs, and I think I went over this once before one of the drivers take a load or bring a load to your job site say he comes twice that day to your job site and so his third load is to another job site but he's not really paying attention to the load ticket so he ends up coming back to your job site again with a different mix design, a different, uh, con a different concrete altogether, different strength, different admixtures, different everything. So and then you start placing that material without observing the load invoice sheet or this load ticket, like it says here, ticket number. Now what can happen? Well, you place some low strength concrete, some concrete that's not, I mean the aggregate size could be different, the, the admixtures can be different. You know, uh, this here is 4,000 PSI, so that's the required strength at 28 days. However, if the material is placed Let's say they bring out some 2,000, some textile class B or something, some 2,000 PSI mix or whatever. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's just, it's too risky, you know. So that's why it's important to observe every ticket. Now, I looked at all of these tickets as they were coming in and we separate them from each other. The contract gets their copy, I get my copy, which becomes like a record for the Texas Department of Transportation. It goes into the archive, I guess, wherever. And the main thing is, you know, you make sure, like, I'm putting them in order right now, because I had them out of order for our field engineering testing technician okay so now they're back in order everything is in order and it's the 
first load. And I've checked them all before. I just double check. Tell you what happened. Because I don't I, I'm all over the place. Now this is for, these are cherry crush concrete. Um cement stabilized sand tickets. Now we have 1.1 sack we use on this project. We have the 1.5 sack. 7% and 5%. Okay. So I was going through these tickets one day and it was a gang of them. It was way more than this. Probably about 80 of them. And I found one that was for another project. <laughs> and I was like, wow, okay, so the dump truck driver, he brought the ticket, he brought that load, particular load to our project, and it was signed off on, not by me, I wasn't there to observe it either, but when I saw the ticket, you know, I said, okay, wow, we got a load from somewhere else. Now, the good thing is, it was the same 1.1 sack that they were using for that particular area. It was just a backfill or a retaining wall. Okay, so that's the good thing. So we checked down on that and make sure that was okay. Now, look, if it was 1.5 sack, that would have been good too. But the thing is, it was for the wrong project. Okay? So that's why you always observe it. Now, let's say we were using 1.5 sack, the 7%, which we use for backfilling a storm sewer. Okay, and then they bring a load, you know, we get 100 tons of that, and they bring a load of it out that's 1.1 sack, and it's not for the project, or it's 1.1 sack, but it's for the project, but not that location. So it gets rejected. We can't use the unspecified, you know, material to build something. You know, that could create a failure. That could create some unworkable material, whatever, especially with concrete. You know, different concretes are for different things. Like, uh, you look at, I'm under this freeway right now, but you had a column there. Columns are class C. The, 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 at the base of the column, you have what, a, a, what, a top of the drill shaft or a footing. A footing is uh, also class C. But under the footing, if you have sh the, the foundation, the deep foundations, which is the drill shafts, that's a, if they were slurry shafts, they're class SS, okay? And then and you got the caps. Caps are class F. Then you have the, the deck, the bridge deck. Br the bridge deck is class S. You know, the roadway paving out there on that frontage road. You see those cars driving by? That's a, another class. That's going to be class P. Or if it's fast track, it's class HES. You know, so... All those different concretes perform differently, work differently, have different strengths and everything. You know, so it, it, that's why it's important. The aggregate size is different. The ad, admixtures, quantities are different. And, you know, so that's why it's important to make sure that if you're using the same supplier, like all of this concrete come out of the same plant. I don't think these people even have but this one plant near this location. So... That's why it's important to always check your load tickets. Make sure that, you know, the, the, the material that's found right here, Textile Class P6 Sec 4000. Man, I'm loving this phone. This is my new phone, by the way. This is my new phone. This, this camera just works. That other phone played out about two months ago. But this phone here is on point. So... I mean, it just, I like how it just adjusts and everything. I'm going to have fun making videos with this phone. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm just showing you everything that's on the ticket. The, the uh, sold to Balfour Beatty. That's the general contractor. Okay, where is it being placed? Lions. I showed you on the other ticket. It was on the Legion, but they wanted them to go to Lion Street, which is only probably less than 10 minutes away from the actual concrete facility where they um, mix... But they ready to mix the concrete at. Okay, so the this load is 10 cubic yards. This is the first load. Order quantity. Quantity delivered. So when this ticket gets to the job site, this will be the first 10. Okay. 
product code text.p text.class p6 sec 4000 okay it's the date the time batch now this is also important 7 30 a.m this mix here has an hour and a half time restraint on it so from batch time load time to discharge time 90 minutes okay time arrived job site and he's saying it's so here's 733. He's saying he got to the job site at 716. Okay, we really don't check for this, but I, you know, what I do, if I see a truck with the plant being so close, 10 minutes away, 10, 15 minutes tops, if I see a truck that's on site and that's just, you know, kind of in a staging area waiting, and it's been a long time, what I do, I walk over there and I look at the load times. Well, like he said, lead plant. Now, there you get lead plant 743, but arrived job 716. I don't know. Maybe this is a five here. See, but even if, if let's say this is 756. Okay, so you have a 13 minute drive time. You know, they got to take their time, shift their gears, or whatever. But even though. I, if I get if he gets to the job site, you know it's seven fifty six, and you seen the time here it loaded at about seven thirty three. Okay, so when he gets to about eight thirty, if he's still sitting on the job site, he hadn't discharged yet, he hadn't unloaded or whatever. Then I'm gonna go over there and look at the ticket again, make sure. Okay, how long do they have left? before this this guy needs to you know get his stuff you need to unload and get out of here whatever okay and then at the bottom of the ticket you have the, the mixed code the information the cement you train the flash 1.5 inch rock that's the large aggregate from Vulcan the sand the water, another water that's added. Um, this here is add mixture. This is some kind of add mixture they put in right here. You know, and it tells you, it breaks it down. This is per yard. Okay. And then when it gets over here, it's, you know, the whole load right here. Then to give you the percentages back over here, you know, how much over it is or how much under it was. Usually it's the water that's running a little under. Because we just in the spring of the year, whatever. Them, they, they do most of the water adding at the job site. What's necessary to add. So, what do I add to this? Okay. So... I just, let's see if we can get this thing back in focus here. CSJ. Control section job number. And I put in what it is. 0508-01351. The item number. 8 inch. Joint reinforced concrete pave, pavement. That item number is 260. Okay, and then down um, here below that, I put 8 inch JRC. Trying to keep this phone in focus here. Let's see. I know I'm right. JRCP. Okay. And then I put the location station. It's 122. It really is 1122. Right there. The. the you know, on the roadway, the the station numbers are in the thousands. But anyways, I'm gonna put it yeah, eleven twenty two plus ten to station eleven twenty four plus 
nine. Okay, and then zero foot to fourteen foot left. And where was it? Another description. This lane runs southbound. I think they're gonna try to do the other lane Saturday. Southbound Elysian. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So I need to put on there. I put it on one ticket, and you can put it on each ticket. But I'm gonna staple these together. So, by my handy stapler machine, I tell you what, I had a lot of stapler machines too. Well, they're not really a machine, I guess. A little stapler. But uh, this one here, it's one, it's a company, one I believe. I tell you what, it works. I had some that I bought right out the dollar store. That didn't work from day one. <laughs> this one here, this little thing here, this thing gets it. So I, I would staple my stuff, you know, that way if something tries to snag it or pull it away it gets it gets held up so this is this is ready to go all right so that's one thing so now what i have i got some other stuff i gotta work on i gotta work on my safety sheets i gotta catch up this these are my safety uh sheets step back sheets and i'm about a month behind on those <laughs> well you know i've been busy doing some other stuff on everything we do we have everything going right now so i gotta catch that up. i'm gonna catch these up they're not due in until the 30th so i'm putting them in I'm put everyone i'll finish up march and and, and start april today <laughs> so that's it anyway um i'm gonna make another video talking about certifications we are supposed to be we're doing bridge deck in the morning. I have a long bridge deck, a lot of uh, bridge deck film. So I'm going to eventually start working on bridge deck, uh, placing bridge deck, checking rebar on the bridge deck. I think I have some other videos where I show setting the beams. I want to put all of that together, make one video, maybe or maybe break it down, maybe have one where we're doing beams we're doing you know, show the deck panels show the rebar and show the placement of the actual concrete the class s for the bridge deck and whenever we get to the uh the railing the traffic rail i show that too so in the meantime, this is it for this video here. I just wanted to make a little quick video, but when you once you get to talking, these videos go 18 minutes. Look at this one here; it's almost 19 minutes. So I'll let y'all go, like, subscribe, share, comment, whatever. Uh, let me know if you got any questions, any ideas for a video on construction materials testing and inspection.